the, the service is crap, your 10 year warranty is crap, the batteries are crap, let's put it that way, I would never get these batteries again, it's not good enough. doing when you're using some stuff it starts having internal error alarms going on and then we go again there's a the battery red light on it and there we go again Right, so this video has been a really long time coming. So we've had problems with our Pylon Tech batteries with an internal fault alarm. It says internal battery failure, something along that nature. We've been trying to find out what has been causing it and been in contact with our supplier and tried to be in contact with Pylon Tech, but to no avail. Even family members tried to call Pylon Tech to try to get hold of them for us and you don't get any answer. When our batteries were first installed, what we did was we daisy chained them together and left them so all the dots were the same. I mean the manual it says within one dot and then the battery management system should even them all out so they're balanced. So the big thing with our um, supplier was they were saying that that will be an imbalance that's causing your problems. You've got to balance them all and the way of doing that they were suggesting is to charge them individually at under 5 amps and charge them to 100% and then put them all back together. So. We said, right, that's going to take a long time. So because we didn't really want to spend forever in the day charging batteries, we looked into getting some battery view software. And there's probably places online that have been sort of allowing people to sort of download something like that. We couldn't find it and we wanted a decent manual that tells you how to do it. So we found a guy on eBay that was selling basically how to do it. The manual, it comes with the stuff that you can plug in and find out through a battery view what is going on with your batteries and because it has a manual and if we have to do this at a late stage we can just look in the manual haven't got to try and find out again how to do it and remind myself it's all here kept up here so we know how to do that and the guy was really helpful so I'll put a link in the description so if you need to find out what's wrong with your batteries though it's not something the user should be doing or having to do look we're all having to do it because Pylon Tech are just not that good customer service so I know I'm going to get taken apart with this because um, when people spend a lot of money they don't like to admit by remorse you know we've all spent a lot of money and when it comes to admitting that uh, you've perhaps made a mistake you know you've made a mistake when it goes wrong so all those people that go ah oh, it's your fault because we've had people say yeah you, it's it's a be you know you're batteries are imbalanced and you've done this wrong, you've done that wrong and they've never come up with anything that we've actually done wrong with the batteries. There's just negativity because they don't want to admit that actually it's crap, the, the service is crap, your 10 year warranty is crap and that's what we're really finding out at the moment. And if you even try to question it on some of the Pylon Tech websites, you know, on, on like Facebook or anything like that, my God, you get attacked. You know, there's people on there that have had problems with stuff, you know, firmware problems. And they actually come under so much crap from people from just having their own point of view. And that's really not in the spirit of off-grid living. You know, live and let live and be able to discuss without getting, you know, um, crapped on by people. No, nothing, no it alls is what I call them generally because there's um, lots of people that are um, DIYers that are claiming they are professionals now I would never claim that that I'm doing anything professional so when we first installed these batteries pretty much immediately we got an alarm um, as soon as we everything was switched on we had a alarm uh, go off and uh, it was this internal failure alarm so so I called the company up that we bought them on and I said look I'm not very happy with this I'm starting to get worried I've bought eight batteries one of them won't start at all, it will not switch on and now we've got an internal failure alarm going off. The supplier said look they do these weird things until they get a full charge into them they, they do odd things. First thing you've got to do is get a full charge into them and they'll settle themselves out. So I said okay they shouldn't be telling you that frightening thing internal battery failure um, just because they need charging. But anyway you go along with it. So we've went along with it and 
they were fine through the summer. They were fine until you start getting down below 70%. So it's been lots of toing and froing. We've had to do all sorts of things. I've had to borrow a Windows computer to run this um, software, the battery view software on. You can do it with a Mac, but only if it's an older Mac. You can download a virtual Windows machine, they call it. And, you know, all this and you're off grid. Uh, to, to run on a Mac, but our Mac was too new, so it wouldn't work. So I borrowed my brother's Windows laptop and I had to buy some other bits and pieces to make it work so that it would plug into the thing, all extra cost, as well as buying the software stuff online as well from eBay. And then we could check on the batteries and find out what was wrong with them. And it turns out they were all balanced really well. So the as for the, you know, the balancing part of the batteries they were holding their balance and, and it was keeping things good we could see that battery six had gone off nearly 700 times it had basically reset switched off and on switched off and on we downloaded our stuff sent it to pylon tech pylon tech eventually got back to us i mean this has taken lots and lots of our time and it takes weeks and weeks to hear back from these people and we've never managed to get hold of pylon tech personally our supplier did we got this this email back from our supplier passing a message on from pylon tech as well so our supplier said, good afternoon, Fraser. Pilotech has suggested using that module as the last module in the stack. They have noted a short circuit in the event history and think that the module reset could be related to the communication between modules. And so, you know, we, we wanted to find out more about this. So, why has it had a short circuit? Has it got something to do with communication problem between the cables, why it would have done that? Or are they two separate issues completely? And uh, we just don't know. I'm um, just, you know, it's just a wielded bite, really. And, and the fact that they're actually telling me to use a faulty item just to mask the problem and chuck it at the back of the... I'm um, pissed off about it, really. Uh, it's, you know, it's already looking like a crap service. And this carries on. So this is the bit now from China, from Pylon Tech. Because the last module will only send message but not receive message from the other modules, it cannot change the communication of the whole system unless it cannot send messages. The internal error is checked from the 0x200 error code in the event data. Normally there are possible reasons. 1. Bad cable connection. 2. Link port damage. So I advise the client to put it as the last module to avoid these problems. <sighs> you know, so just hide it. So um, that is the answer to it. So that's your warranty right there, it sounded like. There, there's a problem. Chuck it, chuck it back there. We're still none the wiser with it. We'll have to see. So, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to move battery 6 over to the end. So we're going to try this. That means the light's going to go out and I'm going to have very little poor light in here because I've got to switch everything off, PV off, inverter off, batteries off, switch them over and put it all back on again and then try that out. And we'll wait a couple of days and see. The batteries are crap, let's put it that way. I would never get these batteries again. Uh, the, the warranty and uh, just from getting things like this back, you know, they're, they're not, um, it's not good enough to just uh, mask the problem. You know, fix the problem, send me a new one out, fine. You know, even after when the first battery, uh, battery eight wouldn't switch on, we didn't have uh, um, someone saying, we'll just change it over, just send it back and we'll give you a new one. We had, oh, that'll have to be repaired even though it had never been bloody switched on. This is not a good service. Our um, supplier is at fault as well, because if they would push a bit more, then something would be done, perhaps. You know, they could push Pylon Tech somewhat more, but they're not really pushing hard enough. And then Pylon Tech, Pylon Tech really are trying to get out of it as well. So when you've got them both trying to get out of it, it's doubly hard to get anything done and it's taken a long long time and it's all on us to find out to buy stuff to try to work out what's going wrong with the things and some people think that's acceptable I really don't think that's acceptable but I have so little trust in them now that I'm glad we are getting the data I do have remorse about ever getting because this 10 year warranty thing forget it it's crap total crap <sighs> right so we've moved some batteries about. We've moved battery six that was causing all the problems that has been setting the alarm off has been now moved 
to where battery 7 is and is right on the end so that this communication thing that they're suggesting uh, shouldn't um, carry on. Uh, it should be able to not have to relay back is what they're suggesting. So we'll try that. So tomorrow we'll test it. We'll test and see. We'll run it down below 70%, 70% and see if that is right. It's been a couple of days since we've moved our batteries around and since we've uh, done what Pylon Tech recommended um, putting it at the end so we've had 12 internal failures since that so at least 12 because we've been testing it out and we've been running it down a little bit and it just keeps going off we're pretty sure it's going to be that battery 6 that's now in where battery 7 was its place so what I've actually done today is I've taken that battery out of the system so that we can see if the remaining six batteries are all good and it runs how it should at the moment it's running really well but we're quite highly charged i think uh, over the next couple of days i'll run it down and then we'll have to wait and see i think we're going to be fine because well, they weren't problems before why should they be problems now it's annoying because uh, pylon tech haven't come up with the solution to this problem and nor do they seem to know what the problem is by the looks of things so we're gonna have to start uh fighting to send it back but we'll know more over the next couple of days we'll just make sure everything's um, fine with these ones and then we'll start uh, getting a bit more aggressive with our approach I think so if you'd like to know more about how our solar system's been working check out this video